Today we're making copycat Pizza Hut chicken alfredo pasta oven bake. Let's get to it. But before that, we would like to wish our dear sweet sisters in the faith, Gloria Lopez from Fresno, California, and Debbie Nagatori from the islands of Hawaii, a very blessed birthday. Their birthday is Friday, March 3rd. Happy birthday, ladies. We love you, and we hope to meet you soon. And if we didn't get your name right, we deeply apologize, and we hope you enjoy this video. Welcome back to Cooking with Kayla D. I'm Kayla, and this is my husband, Randy my disclaimer if you haven't done so please like subscribe and remember to hit that notification bell to get all of our latest episodes as they release for today's ingredients you're going to need a pound of your pasta of choice three tablespoons of olive oil four to six chicken strips or two whole chicken breasts one tablespoon of italian seasoning two tablespoons of butter one half cup of sour cream one half teaspoon of each salt and pepper, one teaspoon of each garlic powder and onion powder. You will also need one cup of heavy whipping cream, one cup of Parmesan cheese, and two cups of mozzarella or provolone cheese or a mix of the two. Also, if you would like to do gluten-free, use the gluten-free pasta instead of regular. And if you're doing keto, use a whole head of cauliflower cut into pieces and steamed. For your gluten-free or keto low-carb, all the other ingredients will remain the same. First off, you want to get some water boiling, where you're going to cook your gluten-free pasta or regular pasta or your cauliflower. You're going to follow the package directions on your pasta. After you cook it, you're going to drain it and let it sit. Same with your cauliflower. Next, you're going to go ahead and take a skillet, get it over medium to medium high heat. You're going to go ahead and put your oil into the pan. Once it is hot, you're going to go ahead and add in your chicken strips. Now you can go ahead and add your Italian seasoning directly to your strips or chicken breasts, or you can go ahead and add it into your roux that we're going to be making here in a little bit. I chose to go ahead and add it right onto the strips. So for the Italian seasoning, I went ahead and just rubbed it in to the chicken and went ahead and fried it with that on there. I cooked it for about two minutes on each side, up to three minutes before flipping. And I went ahead and flipped this. And of course, as you can see, my chicken is fairly thin, so it is going to cook a lot faster than if you're using a thick breast. If you're using whole breast, I do suggest to fillet it in half. You could also bake it if you so choose to. You could also buy a rotisserie chicken if you don't want to be cooking chicken or buy the already cooked rotisserie strips that they do sell at the grocery store. I will leave a link in the description area if you want to try out those already cooked chicken strips and also a link for the Costco chicken kebab chicken because that would be absolutely delicious in this recipe. You want to make sure to check the temperature of your chicken and make sure it's at 165 degrees. That way it is fully cooked and then you know you are safe to go ahead and eat it. So go ahead and remove that from the pan and you want to set it aside. So as you can see here, we have our butter, we have our sour cream. I have got my salt, pepper, my garlic powder, and my onion powder separated and ready to go here. I've got my heavy whipping cream here and I've got my Parmesan cheese here. And we're going to go ahead and get started on this. You do want to reserve one third of that Parmesan cheese for the top and just use the rest of it to cook right now. So in that pan you cooked your chicken in, you're going to go ahead and melt down your butter right into that skillet. Now if you baked your chicken or bought store bought chicken, at this time you want to put a tablespoon of olive oil into a skillet over medium to high heat and add the butter to it. And then you can continue as we are now. After you get that butter melted down, now you're going to go ahead and add your cream directly into that skillet so that cream can start coming up to temperature. You are now making basically an Alfredo sauce. So this is the sauce that is going to go ahead and top our delicious bake. Go ahead and whisk that around, trying to combine the butter and then of course all the deliciousness that was left in the bottom of the skillet from cooking our chicken, if you cooked your chicken. Once you have that all whisked in, then we're gonna go on to our next step. We're gonna go ahead and add in our sour cream at this time. Once you get your sour cream in, you're gonna wanna whisk that in until it is blended in well. 
and incorporate it. You'll want to do this before that heavy cream comes up full to temperature. That way you're tempering in your sour cream so it does not curdle. So you'll only want that heavy cream to be cooking for about one to two minutes tops before adding in that sour cream. That allows that sour cream to blend in smooth and then you won't have little curds all over the place. And see, it's very smooth. So now it's continuing to warm up and we're going on to our next step. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in my dry seasonings, which is the onion powder, the garlic powder, the salt, and the pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk that and I wanna make sure to do it well. That way it gives the salt time and the garlic and onion powder to dissolve into our delicious little roux here. Or Alfredo sauce, however you wanna say it. The pepper obviously does not dissolve, so you will always see your pepper. You can use white pepper in place of black if you so choose. Now you see our Parmesan cheese, we're gonna set just a little bit aside. You don't even have to do a whole third cup. Like an eighth of a cup is fine. I'm gonna dump the rest of my Parmesan cheese into my skillet. I'm gonna go ahead and start whisking this and it should melt down fairly fast because now we have been cooking for about five minutes which has brought this up to a full temperature right before boiling which is what you want. You do not want this to boil because you do not want it to scorch. It has dairy in it and it will burn and scorch and be very very nasty. You see the texture of that how quick that melted It only took a few seconds so heat off and we're ready to go on to the next step. You want to get yourself out a baking dish like the size of a round cake pan or a pie dish. You're going to want to go ahead and spray that down. I go ahead and put parchment paper on top of that on the bottom. It does help keep the cheese and the pasta from sticking, especially because I am using a metal pan and it has happened in glass pans as well, just to let you know. So then I go ahead and spray it again. And this keeps anything from sticking to the pan. It wipes out very easily when I'm done. Now you're gonna go ahead and put your cooked pasta or your cooked cauliflower right into your dish. Once you have that in there, you're going to take that delicious Alfredo sauce that you made, that roux, and you're going to pour it right over the top. You're not going to stir this and mix it. You're just gonna spread it across the top as evenly as you can get, and it will fall down as it falls down. And the reason we're doing it like this is because we are doing a copycat version, and this is how they do it there from what we have seen in the videos. I'll have to ask my niece and nephew. They both work at Pizza Hut. We might have to do that. So after that, you're going to go ahead and you're going to take your chicken and you wanna cut it up into bite-sized pieces. This is why I did use the chicken strips versus the chicken breast. It's easier to cut. I like my little scissors. I just cut those things up. I cut everything up with those things. It just makes life in the kitchen so much easier. And then I never have an accident cutting myself. I try to use knives as less as possible. So cut, 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 and get that chicken inside your little cooking dish. And look at that, those are perfect little bite sizes. Look at that, that's perfect. That's like a really good bite, actually. It's a pretty big bite. So it's good. So now you wanna go ahead and you wanna sprinkle your chicken evenly throughout your dish. I like to place it almost like I'm doing toppings on a pizza. That way it's kind of getting evenly around. So when I scoop it out, because you won't be able to see the chicken, everyone's getting chicken within their scoop. So nobody's lacking in the chicken area. Now, if you're using rotisserie chicken, you just go ahead and cover it with your rotisserie chicken. And then also if you're using like the cooked chicken, you would do it just like you will here. If you bought the strips, which I will have a link in the description area for that, then you can go ahead and just cut those in half and then place those around just like we did here in the video. And as you can see, it's completely covered in chicken, which is so awesome. So now we're going to take our mozzarella cheese and we're going to cover this with mozzarella cheese. Look at that. Mmm, yummy. So I will take the mozzarella. And you don't actually have to use the full measurement amount I gave you on that. You just put what looks right for your recipe on yours. You could also use provolone or a mix of mozzarella and provolone. Just a good melting cheese. Even Gruyere cheese is a nice melting cheese. So if you want to like upscale it, go for it. Make it bougie. Whatever you and your family like, go ahead and do it. Now you're going to take that Parmesan cheese. And you're going to go ahead and just top off at the top. 
You can also sprinkle some like Italian seasoning or oregano on this if you would like to, but I'm trying to stick into the traditional of the copycat from Pizza Hut. So we're just going to do it like this and get it right into the oven. You want to bake this in the oven for 375 degrees for about 15 minutes. It should come out like this. It'd be nice and golden brown. Once it is out and it is cooled for five minutes, then you can go ahead and cut into it. I found using a serving spoon was the easiest way. I just went around the edges and then went ahead and scooped it out and it came right out. And I will show you how it did not stick into my pan. It was just so awesome. And normally with metal pans or even with glass pans, pasta and cheese and stuff will stick really bad. And then you have to soak it and do all this scrubbing. But with this one, you did not. As you can see, it did not stick. And that paper at the bottom will peel right out. And all that's going to be under it is a little bit of oil. So it's very easy to clean and wash. And there you have it. There's our carpy cat, Pizza Hut, Chicken Alfredo, Oven Bake. Doesn't that look delicious? And ours ended up being gluten-free. So you can make this any way you choose. Keto, gluten-free, or you can do a regular recipe. Stay tuned to the end of this video. We have some videos of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and also of a special friend that we found on the beach when we were walking this week. Now to the King Eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 1 Timothy 1.17 While we were out for a walk this week, we saw Miss Tara Bella. This is one of our neighbors here at Blue Water Resort. It's her companion. She is the cutest, sweetest little fur baby you ever did see. And we just had to put a cameo in here of her. We love her so much. Here are also some starfish that were found on the beach. A few of them washed up. So we have a couple photos here that a viewer sent in. And a lot of clam shells. We just have a lot of activity going on here in Myrtle Beach. And also you'll see some jellyfish splattered throughout here. Where some of the sea creatures and sharks and things have had a good time eating the tentacles off of them. And then the main body washes to shore. And of course we can't leave out the beautiful ocean. We hope you enjoyed your time here on Cooking with Kayla D. We ask that you would like, subscribe, and share our channel if you haven't done so already. And remember to hit that notification bell. For more delicious recipes, you can click the icon here on the right. And to subscribe to our channel, the icon here on the left. We hope to see you again soon. And as always, we say stay in that kitchen and keep on cooking. God bless. Until next time. Arrivederci.